All right, y'all, second bridge fish of the day for me. Pulling some good drag. The moon. It's awesome. What's happening, you guys? This morning, I'm out here again with my buddy, Colton Watkins. And you guys, sun hasn't even came up yet. Today, striper and trout is the name of the game. I'm trying to get on these fish low light, but we got no plans today but catching fish. Showing y'all some, hopefully, some awesome fish catching action. It's kind of like an early winter pattern. Water temp is starting to get into the 40s, and uh, these fish, hopefully the striper are gonna be pretty active because it's still kind of their more comfortable water temp. Trout are gonna be kind of slow, but we're gonna hopefully target those trout when the sun comes up. It's supposed to be warm today. Water temp right now is like 48, but you guys, today, hopefully we can show you guys some awesome striped bass fishing. There's pretty much nothing else for me to say other than we're gonna run out to this spot, get out there nice and early before the sun comes up, and hopefully get on some fish. So beautiful, beautiful sunrise, nature, and the refinery. <laughs> yep, that's downtown Norfolk for y'all. Oh. Beautiful nature and then industry. And more industry. Dang, dude. It's an awesome sunrise. That's why it pays to get up early. All right, y'all, so what we're gonna be doing for these striped bass is we're gonna be targeting a lot of structure. Bridges, docks, rocks, stuff like that. So first spot that we're gonna try is this big bridge right here. These bridges are really cool because they were built like a really long time ago. I don't know when. I could be lying to you guys like on Step Brothers. This bridge right here was built by General Custer himself in 1895. All right, you guys, first bait is going to be some Z-Man nuclear chicken, half ounce jig head right here. We're going to be varying our jig heads, uh, half ounce, <clears throat> even going to a quarter ounce, and maybe when we fish in some shallow areas, going even to like an eighth ounce. But right here, we've got some uh, deeper water. What's up, bro? Imagine working on this bridge, dude, every day. Having to climb like all the way to the top every day. All right, you guys, this is the second spot that we're fishing. As you can hear, there's a train coming across this bridge. So this bridge actually is still functioning. Pretty cool. fish there we go yeah oh yeah all right you guys fish on i think that's a good one that's a good one well not too bad it's got spike good yeah all right y'all there it is, that's our first little fish of the day. That's a small one. Definitely the target species, but also definitely not the size that we're looking for. But we'll take it. It's fun action all day long. Just in time for the bridge to come down. It is beautiful out today. I got a fish. Fish on. Yeah. I don't know. He doesn't know he's hooked yet. Let's see, man. 
All right, y'all, second bridge fish of the day for me. Pulling some good drag. Please be a keeper. Oh, son. Thank you, sir. Dude, son, that is what's up. You guys, this right here, this is what bridge fishing is all about. That is a giant for Virginia standards in the Elizabeth River. Oh my gosh, that's sick. You know, we can catch these guys in the Chesapeake Bay all day long, but there's something about pulling these duds. Ah. So as I was saying, we can catch these fish in the Chesapeake Bay all day long, but there's something about pulling these studs right out of these like bridges and stuff just inshore. This is so sick. That's what we came out here for, target species. So sick. All right, y'all, so Colt and I, we had an awesome morning catching the striped bass. Suns came up all the way, uh, tides moving in. And uh, so anyways, we're gonna go ahead and we got our limit of striper in Virginia. You can only keep one striper. So we're gonna change it up. We're gonna do some speckled trout fishing. See y'all at the speckled trout spot. These bridges are really loud. Get my ghetto anchor. Check that out. Don't even have a clip on it. Mirror lure and jerk bait bite. That's what's happening right now. I should tie in a double XL. I'm telling you guys, wintertime trout fishing is awesome. There's something like, you know how when your reel, like line hasn't been out from a certain spot, it kind of like seizes up at that point? Yeah. Oh, there we go. There's, yeah. Head shaking. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love those head shakes. Love that trout thump. Never ever gets old. Oh man. Dang, this is a good one. I'll come over. Okay, this guy's taking me over here. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Come on. Thank you. Yeah, buddy. That's a good one. That's a very good one. 20? Yeah, I'd say probably dead on about 21. Yeah. Sun. All right, you guys, there it is. That is 21 inch fish right there on the jerk bait. Oh, that's a stud. You guys, my stokeometer right now is at a 10. This is probably one of my favorite days of fishing this whole like late fall and early winter in the past like Definitely in the past like few months. This is like so fun. This is a blast like okay, so This flat right here There's like we got a channel marker Channel marker right there. So you got like 10 foot of water and then we've got This flat it's probably about two to three feet so right now it's like air temp is about 60 62 degrees or so Water temp is right at 50. The pattern that we're fishing y'all is you just want to find like right now. So it's like, it's 12 feet right now, right below the boat, 12 foot of water. So we got 12 foot right here. And then we know it's shallow up there. So you guys in the winter time, again, these trout, deep water to trout can only be like eight to 10 feet, sometimes even like six feet. So, you know, if you have a spot, typically I like 10 foot is a healthy kind of depth, especially in the winter time. But if you have a flat that's like right next to like 10 to 12, even 14 feet, and you've got like a, a flat, and then if you have a creek mouth with that flat, and you've got oyster bed right there, you're definitely gonna be in a good spot. So this is just awesome. Grass flat right here. And then, yeah, we've got this other creek mouth way up there. And we've got like, you can see the white stake up there and that so that white stake marks you know oyster bed you guys this is awesome fish he's jumping gator rolling all 
but y'all check this out see this black mud right here oh it's really heavy this black mud right here that's what warms up that's what brings these trout back in here is that dark mud I wonder what would happen if we just like mosey. There's fish. All right, y'all, this is my limit right here. Oh, it's probably 15. Yeah. Oh. Whacked it on the jig. And I jigged it up. It's still on, dude. Running at the boat. Look at this. Dude, that was insane. He just picked it up I like running, that was crazy. Yeah. That is the yellow mouth that we came out here for. All right, y'all. So here we are back in the kitchen and that was an awesome awesome day of fishing. Check out this cooler, y'all. So, this right here is what we like to see. We've got our nice uh you guys check this out. We got like a 22-inch trout right here. Giant trout and this beautiful striped bass that I'm gonna cook and fillet up for you guys. These striped bass, I know there's a lot of people complaining about the regulations in Virginia. I just have to say, I love catching and cooking these striped bass. So the best tasting striped bass are the mid 20 inchers. This is like a 25 inch striped bass. And this is like, in my opinion, the best tasting size. The big ones, we don't need to eat those big ones anyways. They closed our trophy season here in Virginia waters and Maryland. And I totally am on board with that. I hope that we can have these to catch and to cook and to eat in many, many more years to come. So you guys, so this recipe that I'm gonna cook this striped bass is gonna be seared. You guys, I just love the whole entire process of catching and harvesting, filleting, and preparing my fish. All I'm doing is I'm just gonna be adding some extra virgin olive oil. I like to go pretty heavy on the olive oil and uh, just your normal spices. Uh, so with my spices, I like to use basil, thyme, garlic. Also, y'all, I just wanna say thank you so much for your support um, this past year in 2019. And it just really, really means a lot when I see y'all out in the community at tackle shops, um, just out and you guys like holler at us and say something. And then the comments that y'all leave too. We read every single comment and we really appreciate the feedback and all the encouragement that y'all have given us. It really motivates us and we just really can't thank y'all enough. You know, what we're gonna do is just keep paying it forward and putting out more solid content for y'all. 2020 is a big year. We got a lot of stuff going. So anyways, you guys, thank y'all for watching and uh, stay tuned for a lot more epic videos to come. You guys get up off your butt. Go catch yourself a big old striped bass. All right, y'all, peace out.